Um, okay. So this is process of reality. Process and reality begins with a sentence that sheds a great deal of light upon Whitehead's metaphysical orientation. These lectures, as he said, these lectures are based upon our recurrent recurrence to that phase of philosoph philosophical thought which began with which began with Descartes and ended with Hume. Cartesian, Cartesian flaw. Descartes adapting to uh, adapting the classical notion of substance to his own purposes. Uh, classical mean Greek, Greek and yes, Roman. Um, classical notions of substance, that is Aristotelian conception of substance, and substance is important in Descartes. He talked about two substance, matter and mind, but in fact, it's, according to his definition, the real substance is only God, uh, the idea which was further developed by Spinoza, for example. Um, Descartes adapting the classic, sorry, Descartes adapting the Classical notion of substance to his own purposes be begins a phase of philosophical thought by assuming that there are two distinct, utterly distinct, two distinct, utterly different kinds of substance, mind and matter. Although it should be remembered that for him, substance in the general sense is only God. And I guess God in neither mind nor matter, <laughs> I don't know, or maybe the cosmic mind, each requiring nothing but itself in order to exist. That's not literally true because both require God in a way, in, in Descartes' system anyway. This essentially launches the reign of epistemology with the flaws. If knowing begins with the experience, if knowing begins with the experiencing of a mental substance capable of existing by itself and cut off from everything ex uh, external to it, then the philosophical challenge is to try to justify it, the claim to establish contact with the reality external to it. That's true, but um, as effects of fact of the matter, uh, we don't know any mental substance as such because, as us human beings, um, we have a mind, but that mind is within a body or at least connected to the body. So the experience is not just mental experience of a mental su substance, but ex even in Descartes, or experience of uh, a human being. That's why um, senses come in, and he has to show the how. We have to move over beyond senses, even though we must start with senses, to grasp what is permanent, uh, in, which, which is indicated by senses, but never fully, um, fully revealed by senses, because senses uh, don't have to, you know, full grasp of reality on their own anyway. It's, so what I want to say is that it's not uh, entirely true that uh, the reign of Andrew begins with just uh, begins with the experiencing of mental substance capable of existing by itself and cut. It is it might be capable of existing by itself, uh, cut off from everything externally, but but it is not cut off from everything external because it actually is connected to, if not situated in our body. <laughs> um, and whatever it experiences, it experiences in combination with our body, even though it can make it, it can distance itself from that body, it cannot detach or totally detach from it. So in that sense, it's not, uh, it's not correct to say that, you know, experience is the experience of uh, mind alone, cut off from everything, capable of existence, itself, and cut off from everything external. Then the philosophical challenge is to try to justify the claim, to establish contact with the reality external to it. So if the, matter and mind are totally distinct and how they interact is you know um, is uh, is a fundamental uh, question for a cartesian epistemology epistemology no doubt about it but obviously that interaction itself is uh, never doubted uh, what you want what you need is a justification or uh, uh, how it happens and obviously kant has one version and then other uh, Cartesians like Leibniz uh, has, and uh, to a certain extent, uh, empiricist Cartesian have other versions. <laughs>